In today's video, we're going to test the effectiveness of different masks by spray painting through them. Which ones are the most effective? Which ones should you wear out in public? Hey, Kenan, how's it going in Chicago? It is cold. We just got our first day of snow. How are things going for you out there in Utah? Woo! I was tracking it. We've had snow here, but I was tracking the snow that you guys were receiving. I've been watching it. You guys definitely got something. <laughs> I mean, you would know way better than me. Apparently, I woke up this morning and was like, what? It snowed out. I love it. Oh, I um, will say, though, all this cold weather makes me happy that I'm wearing a mask because it's like a built-in scarf these days. That is the truth. When I go snowboarding here in Utah, I love having my mask on because it is that built-in, like, extra warmth. So I'm not minding it these days either. Here's the basic idea. Masks are supposed to block particles from passing through the air, but not all masks are created equal. So which ones are the best? To test this, we have five different masks, an N95, a low weave cloth, a high weave cloth, a bandana, and a medical level two mask. We're going to take each one, spray paint through it, so you can know how effective each one is and which ones you should wear. We have some masks on the table and Kenan, you are an expert in this field of viruses and bacteria. So what can we be looking for with these masks? Because there is a lot of information out there and some of it isn't super accurate. So what can we debunk today and help people understand? Yeah, so there's lots of different types of masks out there. And early on during some of the public health work I was doing with the pandemic, I had people ask me, what types of masks are best? We have cloth masks, uh, surgical mask, KN95 mask, there's so many materials, so many types that how do we know which one to choose? So I was thinking today we could do a simple little experiment by looking at each of these different types of masks and seeing how well they do of actually blocking respiratory quote unquote particles. But instead of using respiratory particles, we could use some spray paint. The primary use of a mask is for you to protect others from getting infected from you in case you are infected, or even if you are infected and you don't know so. So masks can range in effectiveness of blocking particles from as high as 94 to 95% of the particles that you would uh, emit being blocked to as low as about 36, or I guess you could be even zero without a mask. So when we're talking about these masks, what is something that we want to be looking for um, for these masks? So let's talk about this bandana, because I see a lot of people wear bandanas. Why is this not effective? At first, I will say, I will still commend anybody who's wearing a face covering because some face covering, some sort of face covering is gonna be better than no face covering at all. Those but are facts. the type of material that you use as a face covering is going to be how effective they are at blocking. So a bandana is pretty thin in terms of the material that it has. Mm -hmm. It also doesn't secure itself down at the base, right? Right. So anytime you're breathing, you're gonna have particles that are passing through because it's only a single layer, a single weave. And anytime you have any flap room, you're gonna have particles that are going out and about around it as well. So I'd say bandanas are my least favorite fa uh, face covering if you're gonna choose to wear one. So I'm gonna go ahead and start getting this experiment set up outside because we don't really wanna spray paint inside. And make sure these masks are doing their job and not letting particles pass through. To do that, as Kenan mentioned, we're using spray paint, but to make it fun, we're of course using glow in the dark spray paint. So while Grace is getting that set up, one reason that we chose to use spray paint is that spray paint works very similarly to the way that your respiratory droplets would work. So if you think of the little pieces of dye that are gonna give the spray paint color, those are synonymous to the little pieces of virus that would be spread. But that dye doesn't just spray out on its own, instead it's trapped in a liquid, which is exactly what we're trying to block in terms of using masks to trap the viruses that are trapped in our respiratory droplets. So I'm looking forward to see how well this actually works in practice. Turn me around. We'll turn you around in a second. I can't see what's going on. Cannon? You there? How many graces does it take to clamp a mask? Let's find out. Okay, so it's not perfect by any means, but it's all set up, it's ready to go. We're gonna head outside and do our first spray paint. Number one, and this is a regular cloth mask. So the wind's gonna add an extra factor. This is why early on we were saying that if you're gonna gather and be around people, it's best to do it outside. Because as we hopefully we'll see, any wind that comes in is gonna move some of those particles and actually stop them from going straight at your target. So cough, cough, and then, hey Cannon, how are you? Nice. 
That looks like it worked pretty well. It did, I feel like. I don't know how much went through on our canvas, but I'm gonna leave you out here, Kenan, but I'm gonna head inside and see if we see anything. Okay, so this glowing in the dark, this is what our spray paint did on the inside of our mask. And that's how much it blocked. And this is how much our mask let through, which is quite a lot. That's pretty yucky. Our canvas, I believe, was too far away because I'm not seeing a lot of glow. There's a couple droplets every, like, here and there, but not a whole lot. That's not too shabby then. And this is a cloth mask that you just bought from a store? Yep, this is just a super simple cloth mask that we found at the store. But, I mean, that's yucky how much like it oozed through. Yeah, so you definitely don't want to be that close to somebody while wearing a mask. But I think that that's really reassuring is, that the, is the fact that a mask that you can pick up from the store is still going to be able to protect you from spreading that out to, what was that, maybe a foot away from you? So this is a one-layered bandana. Something to note about this is I can actually like literally see Billy through it, which is pretty interesting. So I really feel like it's doing nothing. <laughs> cough, cough. And then, hey Cannon, how are you? Let's take this back in. The cloth mask didn't nearly as have as much coming through the other side compared to the back side. And this canvas actually has a ton of speckles all over it. Gross, so yeah, there you go. That is in line with what we hypothesize is that that thin cloth does not do enough, doesn't have enough layers and enough cross mesh work of fabric to catch all of those water droplets that are coming out, in this case, from the spray can. And that was just with two coughs and maybe what? Three, four seconds worth of spraying? Yeah. Now imagine that when you are breathing and walking around and talking all day. That's not just a couple seconds worth of respiratory particles that are coming out. Yeah. That is a day's worth or hours or minutes worth of, of these droplets. All right, so we're hooking up the KN95. So KN95s block about 74 to 90% of particles from leaving your mouth. Uh, these aren't fitted, so this is gonna be an unfitted KN95. There's no seal around it. So it's still gonna block a lot of those large water droplets, which is what we're worried about. Uh, the 95 refers to it being able to block 95% of smaller particles from actually coming in as well. However, we're still not talking about virus-sized particles. We're talking about respiratory-sized droplets. All right, here we go. Cough, cough, and then... Hey, Kenan, hope you're doing well in Chicago. So this mask did a very good job. We don't have a whole lot of leakage coming through. It literally just looks like a whole lot of snot in the back. So let's go take a look at our canvas and see what's up. So on the inside of our mask, I'm charging it. You can see all of it glowing that we, we sprayed. That's good, we want that on the inside. We don't want it spread to the outside. We do, now looking at the outside, I'm not seeing the spray paint leaking through. It looks like it's contained behind another layer, which is very interesting, we have not seen that yet. So my hand, I touched it, it's not wet, I don't have any spray paint on me, but if I touch the back of it, I do have spray paint on my hand. So that's how these are designed, is that there's actually multiple layers in here. You can see that they're, they're stitched around the outside because you have multiple layers that give you a bunch of mesh work. So what you're saying is exactly right. The reason it looks like it's still stuck on the inside is because it's actually trapped as those particles go through many layers and they never make it to the front. There are not a whole lot of specks on here, to be honest. I mean, this is very, very minimum on our canvas. Yeah, but you are still seeing some. We're seeing a couple. So we're seeing some like in the middle a little bit, but the least amount. All right, well, that's good also. So this is also a perfect example of the fact that masks aren't perfect. So this is why nobody said, just put a mask on and go back to work normally. This is why we also need things like social distancing and hand washing in conjunction. The more layers of protection that you have, whether that's layers in a mask or layers of protective mitigating steps, the better protected we all are. Okay, so medical mask or one more cloth mask? Let's go down to medical mask. Okay. I recently read a study that actually showed that surgical masks uh, had a higher protective rating than the unfitted KN95 mask did, which I found very interesting. This was a one-off study, so this isn't all around, but the surgical mask they found protected about 94% of the respiratory particles from getting through, compared to 74 from the KN95. The cool additions to a, a medical mask, oh, I've got one here, 
is that it's got an additional layer to it. So does your medical mask have a blue side and a white side? Yes, and the blue side goes out, right? Yeah, so the purpose of this is a surgical mask. The blue side is a hydrophobic side. So any water particles from outside that are hitting this are gonna get blocked. They're gonna get repelled. This side doesn't like liquid. Gotcha. And the white side is a hydrophilic side, which means that it's going to absorb the liquid that's coming out of you. Interesting. So a lot of times in healthcare professionals, what you'll see is they wear a KN95 mask Mask, and then a surgical mask over it to give you those double layers of protection. All right, here we go. Cough, cough. Hey, Cannon, hope you're having fun in Chicago. Wow, so this one does look like the KN95. So all of it's on the inside. It looks like it's a little wet on the outside, but I don't think really anything's like leaking through. So let's go check it out on the light. No leakage through. I feel the cold of the aerosol spray, but I don't have any on my fingers. Uh, when I touch the back side of it though, I mean, my hands are, I just flipped a whole bunch onto the canvas. You can see the dots on accident. Oh, great, you contaminated our, our research. This one actually looks really good. It doesn't have a whole lot of dots. I think it actually, like we were talking about, has less than the KN95. Yeah, so KN95s are, the, the real trick to them is you want them to be fitted. So actuals, uh, healthcare professionals who have a KN95 mask, they go in for these fit tests, which are uh, this long amount of time that they take to make sure that it fits perfectly and makes a seal. If it's unfitted, it's not gonna do as well. Cough, cough. Hey, Kenan, hope you're having a good day in Chicago. This one actually did a little bit better than the other cloth mask. Um, I don't think it had nearly as much leakage come through. Yeah, barely any spot of leakage come through. So this, I don't know what type of material this is, but it's not like 100% cotton is what that felt like. This is not cotton. Um, this feels more like the bandana type, but it's just a much, much better material. I mean, look at the back of this mask. It did a phenomenal job of holding all of the stuff back. I'm impressed. Ranking these, we said KN95, the surgical mask. Next, we said this pink one, right? Mm -hmm. And then we said these little cloth guys. And then our bandana folded twice would go there. And then our bandana, it's, we're just gonna discard it. If you're gonna wear a bandana, double fold it. Don't even just try to do one layer. It's gonna do nothing. There we go, I love it. Yes, moral of the story, having some <laughs> face covering is definitely gonna be better than none at all. And there are ones that are better than others. Guys, is there anything else you guys want to see us do with masks? This was super fun and interesting and Kenan always has great information on how we can stop the spread. So if you guys want to see us do some more things with masks in the comments below, let us know and we will make sure to do them. Hey friends, make sure you hit that video right there to check out our other latest videos and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.